Hey guys, Jay Nasty here. What is up, boys? So today's video is a Black Ops 3 multiplayer review. I have the game early. I've been playing all day. I'm currently level 26, and surprisingly enough, that actually takes about two, three hours to get to that um, to that ranking. It, it takes quite a bit to rank up in Black Ops 3, just to let you guys know. But I'm going to do a review, an early review, an early rep uh, impressions video, and I think you guys will hopefully find this accurate, as I've done this for the past three years, and people will usually say I'm on point with these. So I'm going to kind of give you what to expect with Black Ops 3. Now I might do a video later uh, once the actual game is released, but I like to do this pre-release so if you guys are gonna debating on buying it you guys can hear my opinion first and foremost I have not played zombies this is not about zombies but zombies I heard is really really good so if you're a zombies player you're gonna like Black Ops 3 so let's talk about the multiplayer and kinda what I've been getting the feel for in this game so first off the maps the best maps in the game in my opinion are the beta maps all of those beta maps were probably the best and then the other maps are very very strange and in my opinion not that great uh, a good a good Call of Duty requires good maps, so if you guys um, like the beta maps, you should like that portion. Um, but I feel like these other maps aren't that great. There's a lot of it feels like they're forcing you in tight spaces to go to an open space, kind of like there's a lot of choke points on the map. But in the open parts of the map, there's a lot of lot of head glitches now. And what I mean by a lot of head glitches, there's a lot of head glitches and a lot of power points with head glitches in open spaces. Um, so moving in this game is actually very very difficult against good players. Now when I was playing earlier, I was trying to rush, and in my opinion, rushing is not the best play style. You have to kind of be more of a defensive um, type of. You have to be more of a patrol type of player, and I can go through that. I can make a video explaining that if you guys want me to. But a rushing play style will not work in this game, in my opinion, against semi-decent players. And um, one thing that I also don't like about Black Ops 3 is the verticality with the jumping. As you guys know, um, Advanced Warfare had the double jump, a lot of verticality, and a lot of people didn't like it. It doesn't really have that Call of Duty feel, if you know what I mean. Black Ops 3 has that same type of feel. It's not a lot of... It, it, it doesn't feel like... It doesn't feel like a CSGO where everything's flat or, or Modern Warfare 3 or Black Ops 2 where everything's kind of flat. The gunfights are in your face. In Black Ops 3, there's a lot of jumping going on. And if you can master the jumping, you'll probably be at a huge advantage in this game. But overall, a lot of verticality and a lot of players jumping. So if you can master the jumping, you'll have a definite advantage over the other players. If you're one of those players that doesn't like to wall run and do all that kind of crazy stuff, you might struggle a little bit until you adapt to the game. And now... Uh, like I said, I'm not a fan of double jumping. I'm not a fan of high verticality in video games. I think it doesn't make it good for a competitive standpoint as well. Uh, if you look at the most popular competitive FPSs um, out there, Halo was very um, flat. CSGO is very flat, and Black Ops 3, or Black Ops 2, excuse me, was very flat as well. Verticality, in my opinion, does not equal a good competitive shooter. Uh, but there is some maps that are fairly flat. I think there's one that kind of like reminds me of, it's like a Z with a bunch of shit in the middle. That's really all I can like explain it. It's a, it's a Z with a big train in the middle with a bunch of head glitches in the middle. And I think that'd be probably a really, really good S&D map. I think S&D will also be really, really good in this game. Um, respawn. Now, if you're like a ground war player like myself or a domination player like myself, the spawns are very, very bad. Tedium as well. They're very unpredictable, very chaotic. The spawns flip a lot in this game, which I am not a fan of. And um, I think the game modes that I'm going to be playing the most are Safeguard, and that's about it. I might venture into S&D a little bit. But overall, Safeguard is probably going to be my main playlist until they fix the spawns. Um, they're that bad. Like, believe me, they will flip. If you're a domination player, they will honestly flip. You will spawn at C or A by yourself, and it, it's I don't I don't really like it. The spawns are really really bad in Call of Duty Black Ops 3, and hopefully they get patched, which I'm assuming they will. So let's talk about gun balance, guys. This is an AR dominant Call of Duty. AR AR dominant meaning that's the best gun in the game, the best types of gun in the game. Then it's probably followed by SMGs. And on a side note, LMGs hit hard as fuck. And they are really, really good, but you move slow. So those are more of a campy type uh, weapon, kind of like in Black Ops 2 LMG target finder type players. They'll probably return in this game as well because LMGs hit extremely, extremely hard, and they're very, very easy to use. But overall, AR dominant gun, AR dominant game. SMGs, I don't know, they're inconsistent for me. Sometimes I melt. Sometimes I get a lot of hit markers. Um, let's talk about the connection a little bit. Connection like. Connections off and on. It's kind of like it's kind of like the beta. Like when I played on PS4 beta, the connection was really really solid. With Xbox 
one, it was really, really terrible. So I think it's all dependent on where you're connecting to the server. Um, I know for on PS4, there's a Dallas dedicated server. So the connection should be really, really good for me. Um, so that is a really, really good thing. But like I said, AR dominant SMGs kind of consistent. Um, the best SMG is actually the, the second SMG. Let me look at it real quick on, um, uh, on here, I was using the VMP. I'm currently using that. It's the second SMG unlock. It's actually better than the CUDA now. I don't know if you guys played the beta, but the CUDA was probably one of the best SMGs in the game. Now the VMP is actually better than the CUDA, which is kind of kind of weird. Um, perk balance. Uh, perk balance is going to be flat jack dependent and tack mass dependent, and hell, maybe even ghost dependent. Um, I really want to go over this, and I really want to talk about this. The maps, like I said, the, I didn't really like the maps that much, and the maps don't have a lot of flow, but what makes the maps even worse, since there's not a lot of flow, and it's, since it's really hard to predict enemy players, a UAV is actually really, really good in this game. It's a lot better than like most Call of Duty's. Like in Black Ops 2, a UAV really didn't mean that much. Like I could predict where the enemy was. I could, I, I know what to do. The map had a lot of flow, you know? And Black Ops 3, a UAV can literally win you the game. It is that strong. It is that powerful this year. And it's because the maps don't have a lot of flow and they're very angly, a lot of buildings, a lot of places to hide from. And um, it is very, very annoying. And I think that the UAV is going to be probably the best kill streak in the game. Um, the Hater will be a really good kill streak in the game. But I think the UAV for its cost. It's the best. It's the best kill streak in the game, and it's actually really annoying to play against a uh, a full team of good players. You're against good players, and your team's not that great. It pretty much comes down to whoever can get the UAVs up and running is going to win the game. Also, one bad thing that I do not like about Black Ops 3, it is very left trigger dominant. And what I mean by left trigger dominant, pre aiming is extremely, extremely annoying, and it's extremely advantageous in this game. And uh, what a lot of people are doing that are doing really well that I see in this game, they're pre-aiming everything and head glitching a lot of things. They're standing behind cover, waiting for the enemies, and they're pushing only when they have a UAV up. And it's really, really annoying to play against because, as you guys know, I like to go balls deep. And when somebody's pre-aiming the corner and I turn the corner, they're going to win the gunfight 90% of the time. Because in Call of Duty, a fundamental flaw of Call of Duty is actually ADSing um, because it takes time to ADS. So if somebody's ADSing you, they're aiming down the site, and you come around that corner, you have not only do you have to react to that player, find out where they're at, you also have to ADS. So you have to do three things while all they have to do is react pretty much and shoot. So it's kind of it's kind of annoying, and I feel like Black Ops 3 is very, very left trigger dominant. So I think this, like I said earlier, this the play style that's gonna it's gonna favor like more of a passive play style, not a rushing play style. Like Modern Warfare 3, you could go balls to the wall. Call of Duty Black Ops 2, you could go balls to the wall. Call of Duty Ghost, not so much. Pre-aiming was pretty uh, important. It's kind of like Call of Duty Ghost in that sense. Uh, so let's talk about hit detection, hit reg. Hit detection is actually really, really good in this game. Like, really, really good. But the only bad thing is hit registration is kind of flunky at times. And I think that's just dependent on connection if your bullets are not working. But overall, hit detection is awesome. Let's talk about snipers real quick. Snipers suck balls. Don't even try. Um, I have a good feeling that they will be patched relatively soon after launch because they are so bad in my opinion. So I think... I think in about two weeks after release, snipers are going to get a buff. They're going to get the aim assist back, and I think they're going to be actually really, really, really strong. Um, so I just kind of want to throw that out there. So we're at 8 minutes and 30 seconds. A lot of people on Twitter asked me some questions, and I kind of want to answer those questions. And um, let's talk about this. So um, let's see. Let's see. Hmm, hmm. That one, uh, Cod Beast HD asked, gun balancing good and the map's good. I already answered that. Um, uh, Mr. Star said, how important is Ghost in the game? Like I said, Ghost might be a main perk for me this year. Just because, like I said, the maps don't have flow and the UAV is going to be super, super strong. Now, uh, Chincho asked, what's the best mode to rank up? I'm going to go out and go on a limb. It might be S&D, dependent on how much you XP you get per kill. Or it might be Safeguard. And why I say Safeguard is if you run non-lethals in Safeguard, you're going to get a lot of kills. Your teammates are going to get a lot of kills. And that XP goes through the roof and you're probably going to rank up the fastest because non-lethals plus the assist bonus you get from those is a very, very fast rank up. Um, player movement. Player movement is, like I said earlier, it's very vital. If you can master the movement, like you can do some crazy stuff in this game. You can actually go quicker by doing some stuff. And sometimes it gets in the way a little bit. 
Um, but overall, the movement's going to be pretty hard to learn and master. And I recommend, highly recommend getting a scuff controller. Because when you're turning, jump, going over around the corner, so you can hold the hold this paddle while still aiming. And um, it's really, really advantageous. But anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the review today. That's my beginning impressions. Overall, I feel like Black Ops 2, Modern Warfare 3 were better games than Black Ops 3. And I feel like the only reason why Black Ops 3 isn't up to standards is the maps and the movement. Um, maps are very key in a Call, uh, Call of Duty game. Um, Black Ops 1, you had WMD, Grid, Radiation, very non-vertical maps, very good maps. Black Ops 2, Standoff, a lot of people like Standoff, a lot of people loved Raid. Very, very non-vertical maps. And in Black Ops 3, some of the maps are non-vertical, but the player movement makes it vertical, which can be very, very annoying to deal with. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed that review. Overall, I would put Black Ops 3 better than Ghost. Uh, I don't know. See, this is this is the problem with me. I feel like Call of Duty Ghosts on the smaller maps was a better game than Black Ops 3. Now, I'm throwing that out there because I said on the smaller maps, there's about three small maps on Call of Duty Ghosts. The rest were pretty shit. But I think on small maps, Call of Duty Ghosts was a little bit more fun than Black Ops. will be a little bit more fun than Black Ops 3. And that's just my opinion. It's better than Advanced Warfare. But overall, I would put... I would put... Black Ops 3 on par with Ghosts on the smaller maps, kind of around that area. So anyways, guys, that's my review. If you guys do want to do this, come back in about a week or two with your opinions. Put them in the comment section below. Don't leave a comment about your game impressions because it, unless you have played the game, if you play the game, you can go for it. But come back, like, like I said, come back in a week, guys, and leave your impressions of the game. And then what I want you guys to do, come back in a month. A month after that and keep leaving your impressions and see how they changed over the the uh over time but i'll see you guys later peace out so back motherfuckers